How many of you uh, live in the area? I'm from Portland. You guys got some crazy traffic in this town. I tell you, that's nuts. How many of you are waiters? How many of you been waiters? How many of you are owners? All right, um, I got 500 slides, so I'm gonna move very fast. My name is Paul Ponce. I'm a career waiter of 35 years. As I told somebody a little bit ago, my parents are still waiting for me to get a real job. My company, Waiters World, make it fun, make it easy, make some money. That's our core value there. Yes, take pictures of any of these slides, so don't be shy. Use the technology to your advantage. Those are the two books. Talk about the Saturday market theory of waiting tables. I wrote an article about this. You can Google this, as a matter of fact, and get a copy of this article. It's a great one to share with your staff. When my boss hired me, and right now I work for a place called Oswego Grill uh, down in Portland, Lake Oswego area, Wilsonville. We also opened the Copper River out in uh, Hillsboro. When Dave Burnett hired me, he gave me a building that cost a little over a million bucks, including the contents. And what he said to me was, Paul, you can have this for nothing. Now I'm going to give you an office. So my office, I did insurance for 10 years before I became a waiter. My office now is I got five tables, one, two, three, four, five. That's my office. And you owners give me everything I need to make a living. You pay for advertising. We just replaced our carpet. It was $25,000. So I got a brand new carpet in my office. I didn't pay a dime for that. So the concept is being entrepreneurial. You want to teach your staff to be entrepreneurs when it comes to the front of the house. Waiters rule culture. Be nice, get the order right. It's nothing fancy about waiting tables. The basics of it is be nice, get the order right. When our guests come and see us, who is our company? Who do we present before them? And it's usually the front of the house front. It's the first impressions that come about your company from your front of the house staff. I set the tone for what our company is. And one of the things I have to be able to do is I have to be able to make an, an emotional connection with my guests. And it all comes from my first, when you first see me. So, first impressions. <laughs> this leaves you with a certain feeling, right? A certain sense of hospitality. Be nice. My dad taught me to be nice. I love him to death with that. He's passed. But in my experience in the business, being nice really is emotional labor, which is very, very taxing. And I'll give you an example. Uh, if I serve uh, 45 guests in a shift, I have to be able to do this no matter what happens. I have to be able to do this. It has to be convincing. I've got a fire in the kitchen. I still got to go out and go, could you please leave through the front? That, or I'm driving to work, I get a flat tire. The babysitter lit, I'm straight and trying to get to work, I'm the server. Well, I get to work and I'm, I'm already unsettled. I have to somehow emotionally push that aside and be able to do this. That is emotional labor. And we have to recognize that in our staff that that's really tough to do, that is not easy. But you have to make them know that is a priority. The hospitality game face is the smile and the eye contact. A smile, every job I've ever had in my life that I worked with the public, they said you got a smile. And as a young man, I thought, I don't feel like smiling. I had a flat tire on the way to work. But I know as a professional person, the smile and the eye contact for a guest is an invitation to service. Many of you today that uh, as you were coming in, I was taking a moment to come in and introduce myself to you. you body language, you're sitting in your chair, your hands are together, you're looking down, meaning you want space. I invade your space, right? And you first, most of you, when you look at me, you had that serious look like, is this guy panhandling? What's he doing? All I had to do was put my hand out and do this. And you mirrored me. I set the tone for our first engagement. I do the same thing when I'm waiting tables. Now, this guy on the right, that's Jason Brandt. He's a CEO for the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association. He and I used to bartend together. This was our welcoming face at the bartender. Doesn't that make you feel warm and fuzzy inside? Aren't you all ready to order something from this person? Aren't you especially ready to engage this person if there's something wrong with the place? Could you send this back to the bar and get you? No. This changes it. It's interesting, when I go here, you guys have, you guys mirror this. You look at them. When I go here, half of you went, so it works. This game face, and it is a skill, it is a technique. You have to teach your staff, that's an important ingredient, table side, to earn your living, to be successful. Hospital game face is easier said than done. And I'm gonna show you, because Donna, my new friend, has volunteered to come up here. I did. Yes, you did, come on. It's here for Donna. 
Now, you don't mind doing this, Donald? You're fine? All right, Donald and I just met. Actually, I, I'm her stalker. I've been following her all over the show. So one of the skills we have to do in our business is we have to be able to carry plates. Donna hasn't waited tables about 20 years. So Donna, here, here, you hold these and hand them to me. What I want you to do is this. All right, yes, yes. Remember this? Yes, I do. Now, you saw her voice? Did you hear her voice? Uh, oh, God, jeez. Now, I talked about that emotional labor. You have, the only thing you need to do, Donna, when you do this, is this. Do not let that leave your face. Are you ready? ready. Boom. Face the audience, two. Yes, look at this. Three. Yes, and her skills came back. Now, the other part of this is, when you're teaching somebody how to do this, you don't get to take out empty plates. You have to bring out food that has sauce on it. What you don't want is you don't want the sauce to get into the beans. You gotta hold it steady. So we'll start with this one. I'll give you this one. What, no, wait, wait. <laughs> you lost it there for a minute. And, yes. One more, happy face. Yes, she's doing good. Yes, and, and, yes, she did it good. All right. But the biggest thing in doing this little routine is when I train the staff, I have to tell them what I'm doing and what I'm what what end result I want. Another technique. The menu. This is my sales suit when I'm table side, correct? We're gonna role play. She is uh, the guest, I'm the server. My question from this menu. Have you ever seen this menu? She is not. I see you have a bronze rockfish here. Can you, I was wondering, what's the sauce that comes with that? Perfect. <laughs> but this happens. So, what you're going to teach your staff is what I call menu mapping. Most menus follow a certain order. Appetizer, salads, soups, sandwiches, entrees, etc. Correct? So, at Oswego Grill, we have a five-page menu. First day with them, I have I showed them the categories, appetizers, starter soups, page two is entree salads, then we have our burgers and sandwiches. And I want them to get this mental picture in their head as to where those are located, and here's why. Now, it's right here. I want you to, you're the guest now, I'm the server. Ask me what, about, uh, what's the sauce on the bronze rockfish? Bronze rockfish. Now, two things, one, what I've done, as I learned how to menu map, I know that the bronze rockfish is right in the middle of our feature menu. So what I did is I, we'll do it again, and I point it. First thing my guest does is they follow my finger. She's done it three times in a row. We have never done this trick together. I get two seconds, one with my finger to find the rockfish, because on the menu it says, well, it comes with, uh, oops, sorry, there you, <laughs> there you go, uh, with a raspberry beer blanc. So what I'm doing is I'm able to give her the correct information versus half the servers, if they're not trained right, they're gonna guess. And then you're asking for trouble. But this is my sales tool. This is what you use to guide. This is where the answers come from. How do I make reading the menu a wow experience? You wear glasses, yes? Now can you read that little print there? Does this help? Oh, did you see her face? Yes, it does. What this is, and I did this myself. I have my own business cards. They're a plastic magnifying lens, credit card size. So I walk, first time I pulled this out of the table with the guest, my guest goes, oh my God. I went, bingo. By the way, for you business people, these are not cheap, but it's the only business card I ever had that nobody ever throws away. They have it with them all the time. Now in some cases, it didn't work because the print was too small, so you gotta think bigger. Right? Yes? That is good for us young ones, for you. Donna, thank you. Thank you so much, dear. I'll care when you go down. So the key is, is training your staff on this. What do I do with my gadget? So, get the order right. Teach your staff to pay attention and listen to the guests. We are often, often when we engage people, we are listening and in our mind we are calculating our response. No, you need to listen to people so you understand what they're telling you. Here's an example. I ordered one pepperoni pizza. They got one pepperoni pizza, right? So, repeat the order back, and that comes from listening to the guests. Product knowledge. Does anybody here serve ribs in the restaurant? Yes, I heard see a head nod. Yes, come on, come on. Yes, no? No, she's lying. Your nose is growing, man. Okay, uh, let's see. Who serves a burger? 
A burger. Tell me about your burger. Tell us, tell about who you work with. Who's your restaurant? If I'm not rolling serves there, tell us about your best burger. Shake. Nice. I have no idea what any of those things are. But the product knowledge. Now, this is what I try to teach our staff. Let's look at the bottom left hand corner. I'm only going to do one. That is our cookies and ice cream. That has over a half pound of cookie dough. There's two, and those are done from scratch in our restaurant. There's two chocolate chip on each side. In the middle, there is a hazelnut cookie. Oregon hazelnuts. Oregon is the number one, yeah, we are the number one producer of hazelnuts in the United States. Oregon is the only state that has a state nut, and I get to show this to you and present it to you for dessert. Now, I'm watching some of you, your faces. You're listening, and then when I give you the only nut, you're going, that's value. I'm giving you value now for your experience. Not just food, this is an experience. The ice cream, we use Cascade ice cream. Cascade Creamery is one of the oldest ice cream producers in Oregon. They're the first ones that came into uh, gluten-free and uh, organic ice creams. They do a fabulous product. The strawberries are fresh. We cut those by hand. So now I'm talking about a product. Yeah, I've got a, a cookie dessert of some sort. I can tell you lots of fun stuff about this, about our menu and about the food. So you have to look at your food products differently. What's unique about them? Where can you arm your staff where they can go out and describe these products so the guest is going, wow, you want that wow factor? My other pet peeve, you didn't write the order down. I train my staff are going, you've got, I'm going to see the paper, write it. If you don't write it down, remember, your kitchen has knives. Don't upset them. All right. I also, as a matter of professional respect, my kitchen works 10 times harder than I do. You've got to set them up for success. Because how many times have you screwed up like this and said, help me? And the only ones there to save you is the kitchen. So help them be successful. The challenge, combining the two for impact. Training and coaching. Service is sales. Sales does not stand by itself. Service is sales. What if I train my people and they leave? What if you don't and they stay? And too, too often we see this in restaurants. I bet they've been there a thousand years and even the managers, the owners, the peers are like, God, why do they keep this person? Why do you keep this person? One-on-ones with your staff. When you hire somebody new, and I, I just had a conversation with somebody today, but it's like, God, the people, the young people, they got no common sense, right? You run into that, no common sense. What is common sense? Common sense is life experience. You don't wait, you aren't born and you have common sense. And because of that, you have to respect your new people coming into your business that they're not going to understand or they're not going to have that common sense until you show them how and why things work. So you have to teach that common sense. Saving face. My, when I train somebody, if, if they are coming to me and, and trying to get the task done and if they are making mistakes, they're doing great. Because in that training cycle, that's when I want those mistakes. If they're not making mistakes, I suspect either they're really smart or they're holding back. They're not engaging because they don't want to look bad. You have to let people have dignity when they make mistakes. It's like they hit the wrong key in the micro and the server or the trainer goes, what'd you do that for? <laughs> no, 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 man. That's the whole reason of training is to let them hit that key wrong. Another mistake servers make or trainers make in training on micros or POS systems is the trainee can't figure out the keyboard, so the trainer goes in and taps it all in. No, 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 no. They will never learn. You must let them struggle with that. They have to struggle to learn it. Let them make those mistakes. The guest. We have two kinds of guests in our business. We have the paying guests, the obvious one, the folks that come to us to have that promise fulfilled of a good time at a good value. And then we have the hired guest. As a waiter, I serve my peers, I serve my management, I serve the kitchen. Everything that I do to make them successful is critically important. So when I hire somebody, I'll give you a good example. Uh, hired staff, we do the menu chains, small menu chains. Oh my God, I have to learn this. I go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Did I tell you I would give you a $25,000 carpet in your office? I'd spend, you know, $10,000 a year in advertising for one reason only, and that's to bring guests to your office so you can make a living. Yes. Then you learn this menu. It's one page. You ever have staff balk at learning new menus, rollouts? 
that guy we just hired. Nice guy, turned out real good. Brandon goes, he's a law student. So four pages, we're doing the initial, uh, four page menu. Because I'm having a hard time and, uh, and I could tell it wasn't that he was having a hard time, he wasn't studying. Because he's a smart guy. I said, wait a minute, Brandon, you're a law student, right? Yes. I said, do you ever get an A in a class? He goes, yeah, and he's real smug now. Give me a class, business, how big is the book? 500 pages, you got an A? I said, I give you five pages. You get an A on this, you buy a car, you go on vacations, you buy homes. I don't want to hear it anymore. So you have to be firm with them. Engaging the new hire, belonging to something special, everybody knows my name. You have to make staff feel like they are part of something important, especially when they're newly hired. Too often we have the new person come in for the first shift and nobody knows they're supposed to be there. Nobody can find their training material. Or whoever the assigned trainer is doesn't know, and the assigned trainer goes, well, dang it, nobody told me I was gonna have a new guy. What kind of a welcome is that? What kind of sense of hospitality culture are you creating for a new hire? This is Nick. The thing that floored him the most was my boss, a week later, after meeting him, came into the restaurant and says, hey, Nick, how you doing? We have three restaurants, we have over 300 employees. Nick was flabbergasted that the owner of the company knew his name. He was hooked. Because what we teach our staff is we want you to learn guest names. We want you to engage your guests the same way that we treat you. How you treat your employees determines how they will treat their guests, without a doubt. Everybody with this guy? Robert Farrell, give him the pickle. I'm a t I worked for this guy, wonderful. He passed away last year. Wonderful man. Uh, this got beat into my head. It's the best thing that ever, the best thing is sliced bread. Emotional connections. Restaurant dining is an emotional experience. This is how. Familiar with this group? All right, now I'm watching faces. Yeah, I'm watching famous eye roll. Oh yeah, yeah. As servers, as owners, what do we not like about this group? Anybody? Sup separate checks, what else? <laughs> On the side, they want hot tea, right? All right, first time I ran into the Red Hat Society, I didn't know who they were. I come to work, it's a long time ago. I come to work, I'm all excited. Paul, you got a tent up? I'm going, oh yeah, lunch man, I'm smoking, I'll be making some money here. I come out and I look, <laughs> I'm smiling, I come out and I see them and they're looking at me like, you're like, oh. <laughs> what did I tell them? What did I just tell them? I don't like you. And that, that afternoon, they got even. Oh man, did they get me. But let's ask, and these folks know that waiters hate them. So here's what I do now with my Red Hat Society. I got regulars that come in, Red Hat Society groups in our community. They want my station. Come out, ladies, oh my God, where did you get those hats? I always carry my cell phone. I know, I know, but I take their picture. I go, come on, scoot together, everybody, come on. And they, oh, well, geez, us, but guys, you guys are hot, let's do this. It has nothing to say, you want something to drink? You want to buy my special today? It has everything to do with hospitality. How do you make them feel? Do they feel welcome? That is the deal breaker. Intuition and initiative. Intuition, you, and you have to describe these things for your staff. Intuition are hunches, gut feelings. Initiative is the power or opportunity to act or take charge. That's empowering your staff. Here's how it works. Nick again. Nick had been with us about a month. Comes to the back of the house. We have a little birthday thing or celebration ice cream thing that we do. He goes, Paul, this lady in the glasses, she's really upset about something. I'm not sure what, but I could tell she's really stressed. She's talking to her friend. And usually with your celebration, you have a birthday ice cream or whatever. And he says, can we give one of these to her? We don't charge it for it. I go, absolutely. What you're looking at is the wow. So letting him go with his intuition and his gut, fe gut feeling about something's wrong, how can we make this a, a better moment? And give and empowering him to make that call, let's do the dessert. These, this lady, I, I, I was working that day and this lady was really, something was really bothering her. They were thrilled. They couldn't believe that Nick picked up, not that he had anything to say, but that he said, you know, this is hoping you have a better day. That's it. They come in here all the time now. But all it took was letting our staff go with their intuitions and empowering them to do that. Resilience, service recovery. When 
our staff make mistakes, especially in that training environment, you need to teach them about what resilience is. What is an example of that? Last summer, these four ladies are out on our patio, and I saw the birthday desserts there. And I, I do the uh, uh, social media uh, for our company, so I have my camera. That's the other reason I have the camera, I'm taking the pictures. Yeah, so I come back out to the table. I go, ladies, I see we're having a birthday here. I would like to take your picture. They go, well, why do you want our picture? I said, well, I think that when we put pictures of beautiful women over 50 on our Facebook page, it brings in guys with money. <laughs> and there was this silence for a moment. And then one lady spoke up, uh, the one on the right there in the middle, dark hair. She goes, there's nobody here at this table over 50. And I'm feeling the burden. <laughs> And I go, and now you see why I've been married twice. <laughs> Service recovery, resilience. Allow the staff, they're gonna make mistakes, help them recover, but the important thing is keeping that guest protected. I tell this to my staff, you are your own brand. Your smile is your logo. Your personality is your business card. How you leave others feeling after having an experience with you becomes your trademark. I absolutely believe that. And I go back to that entrepreneurial spirit as a server, as a waiter, as a bartender, as a cocktailer, that my space, my station, my tables, that's my office. And I'm going to run that. Everybody got that? Good. And one more. Wait, wait, let me poke. Oh, oh, you wanted this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ed, all right, so hospitality defined by service finesse. It does not matter what kind of restaurant you have or what kind of service you offer. Finesse counts because finesse shows that you care. Look at the nice clean plate, the lemons light up. Not so much. Even, and, and the bigger story is in the details. So again, as you have standards, it's not just because I say so. You need to do this and explain to your staff. This is the impression that it leaves. All right? POS systems. Biggest pet peeve is read that screen. That's got to be 99% of the time there's a mistake on an order. No, I'll take it back. 90% of the time. It's because the server was in a hurry and they didn't take those two seconds to look at that screen before they set it. And as I explained to the servers, when you do that, you set up the kitchen for failure. They will hate your guts. Besides, you're backing up everybody else because those folks work twice as hard as we do. You've got to set them up for success. So take a moment to look at that screen. There is no excuse, write the order down. I can't, have you gone out where the waiter took the order all by memory and you're all going, ah! and then the next thing you go is, geez, I hope he remembered that. And then inevitably, half the time it comes out, oh, it's all messed up, oh my God. Teamwork, teamwork is nothing more than making your peers look good. Remember, I am that hired customer. I serve my peers. The number, way, number one way to reduce stress for your peers and the kitchen my job. Stay away from this. Look at that. See that? This is a road crew. It's not my job to move that stick. I'm just going to paint over it. Paint around it. It's like uh, winter time, right? What are they drinking a lot of? Coffee. So I go to the back. I'm serving the coffee for one of my guests. Is that much coffee in the coffee pot? Well, heck, there's nobody looking. Put that back and run. No. I had a young fellow the other day, that ice cream dish in the dish area, have a special rack. He comes back, he goes, there's no rack. Why is there no rack? I go, let me show you how you fix this. Follow me. We go back and we get a rack and we put it in. There, all done, all fixed. So take charge, make it happen. Don't wait for somebody else. Toughest thing to teach, especially even seasoned veterans when you bring them into your organization as a new hire is what I call situational awareness because they get tunnel vision. Situational, what this is, is that's a submarine in the middle. Situation, and I actually learned this, I'm a Vietnam vet, I learned this when I was in Vietnam. If it's out of place a little bit, pay attention, because it could kill you. <laughs> All right? So, situation awareness, and when you walk into your station, I got five tables, take three seconds, stop, look at every table. What are they going to need? What are the next three things that guest is going to need from you? Because waiting tables is like being an attack submarine. Not only are you going out to your targets, your targets are locked on on you, and they are unpredictable. 
They'll be asking you for things. They have different tempos. Waiting tables is like being the conductor, a five table station of five different orchestras playing a different beat, starting at different times, and I have to manage and conduct all of those. So the tunnel vision comes from, they'll go to that one table, get all the de details done. Remember, even as a seasoned veteran, they're learning new procedures and systems. So rather than, than look up and check everybody before they leave as to what other things I can bring, they just get that one table in their head and they leave. No. You otherwise you do it back and forth, back and forth. That was, uh, at my friend Randy's restaurant, uh, Stockton's restaurant over in uh, Maple Valley. And I, I looked at his, his layout and I go, okay, table four to where the bar, that's what, that's gotta be about 20 yards. So if I do 20 yards out and back, they ordered a cup of coffee, right? Sure, let me get, go back. I'd like some cream. You betcha, da, da, da. okay, that's 80 yards, right? You know what, my friend would like something to do. What, okay, we're going 160 yards now. They don't pay us by the mile. So situational awareness is keeping yourself aware of everything and all the possible uh, options that you have to provide service to your guests. I'll be back. That is the bottom line. Uh, you're, you're seasoned veterans. You know that it's cheaper to keep a guest than it is to get a new one. That's, that's why I go back to teaching your staff that entrepreneurial spirit. You got your office? I want people come to this restaurant asking for your station. That's my target. Service sales goal. My job as a service sales professional is to make it as easy as possible for my guests to spend their money. It is not to get them to buy stuff they don't want that doesn't match up with them. I'm not a high pressure salesman. It's to not get in their way. And I, then I want my guests to come back. Service sales goal is impact. Now what does that mean, impact? Guest counts. I have my five table station, they're all four tops, four top seating. I've got two shifts a day, five days a week, 50 weeks out of the year, and I want 1.5 turns out of that station. So there's my count. If I get one turn, for me, one server, that's 10,000 guests. What's your check average per guest? If I can turn that station 50% more in my shift, that's another 5,000 opportunities to engage guests. So as a server, you talk to them in these terms. You talk to them like business people. If you can get those extra turns, and, and servers typically go, yeah, well, you just want to make more money. This is why it's called a job. We all want to be making more money. Again, not selling people stuff they don't want or making them feel uncomfortable, but taking advantage of the opportunity. Oswego Grill, where I work, there's our seating. If I can get one turn, that's almost, what, where are we going, 217,000? If I can get 1.5 turn of the whole restaurant all day, once, if I can improve, that's 326,000 guests. Have you ever sat down and counted how many seats you have in the restaurants and if you can do this? It is shocking. But to me, that's opportunity. That's not work, that's opportunity. I tell this to my peers when they come in. Within two stoplights of our restaurant, and this is a fact, there are over 30 different dining options to the people that came in. Where I work, we have very lousy parking. We share with a little mini mall and we share it with several other businesses. So it's just tough to park in there. Our guests that walk in the front door, first they decided to choose us over the 30. Secondly, they put up with our parking lot. We were on our way. They took the time to wait to get set. They get to my station. They finally made their goal. They made it to their own seat. And they asked me the soup, and I go, dude, I don't know, I just got here. So I've just flushed all their effort right down the top. I told them, I don't care. And as a server, I can't make a living that way. As an operator, if you want people coming back, you've got to have to have that, you have to have that high impact, positive value for every guest that comes in. Some general things. Hire the right people. Now, what is the right people? Um, I find in our business often that, how many of you offer bottled wine? A lot of waiters can talk wine. And then you put them on the floor and they're not selling any wine. Here's an interview suggestion I have when you go to discuss wine. Ask them, do you familiar with it? Yeah, yeah, I'm good with wine. Do you sell them? Tell me about your favorite wine. All of that academic information. And then give them a wine key and an unopened bottle and say, open this. Because that's where, that's where you cut the mustard. Because what happens is, and 
owners that never do this. Do that. Get them to open the bottle. Deliver the promise. Genuine hospitality delivered with urgency. These are my peers. These are the people that I work with every day. Um, it's kind of fun because this picture I took kind of on the fly. But I look forward to going to work every day. Because I got a boss that's up. I got peers that are up. We kind of share the vibe, if you will. It's not that we don't have bad days or things don't go wrong. But this is one of those businesses that to be successful, you really have to watch one another's backs. And that intuition and that ability to let people initiate action in helping one another goes so far, so incredibly far. Um, and as a team in the restaurant business, you can't do this by yourself. I don't care how good any individual is. You cannot be successful as an organization when it's just one, one person against all. It's just not going to happen. It's got to be perfect food. When I come in the morning, I taste the soups. It's not my job to taste the soups. I'm, I'm a waiter. I'm an hourly employee. I taste my soups because our soups are really popular. I want to make sure they're right. If something comes up on the line, and, and my boss enables me to do this. If I'm running the food, I get the last check on that plate. If there's anything wrong with it, I need to put it back to my wheel guy, working the line, or the manager that's expediting. Say, listen, it needs this, it needs that. We need to make it right. And it has to be, and that's easier said than done. That is not easy. But to be consistent and have high quality, you've got to, you've got to hold people's hands to the fire as far as standards are concerned. Now, I did, if anybody here get down to Oregon, I'm, I'm just pitching this. You ever hear about complaints on service on the internet? Oh yeah, it's endless. I got tired of that, so I created this Facebook page. Great Oregon restaurant service. So if you happen to be dining in Oregon, have a great time with your waiter. I want you to take their picture, tag them, tag the restaurant, and post it on it and tell us about, tell the whole world about what a great experience you had. Because I think that part of what you also need to do, as the old saying is that behavior recognized is behavior repeated. And too often we are nipping at people because they're doing things wrong. You also need to capture your leaders, especially those in your staff who don't have titles, but are the influencers on the attitudes and the culture of your, of your organization, and, and acknowledge them publicly to their contributions to what makes you successful and how they help you. This is my dad. My dad uh, has passed away. He was a farm laborer. He, it's so ironic, I'm in the food business now, but for, God, 50 years, what he did is he brought food to the table in America. When I became a waiter, he was not real excited about that because what he worked hard for was he wanted his, and I was the old, anybody here the oldest? I hate that job. God, I hated that job. He wanted, and, and I did insurance for 10 years before I became a waiter, was very successful with that, decided that's not what I want to do. But when I told him I was gonna wait tables, he never said it to me, but I could tell he was disappointed. When I told him about three years into it that I think I'm going to stay with this for a while, he was really disappointed. But he loved me, and he was good to me, he, he never questioned me. But he taught me work ethic, and he taught me to be nice to people. My posse. These are my grandson. Ben, Joaquin, Isai, and Isaiah. I don't know where my children get these names, but I had to work on this. These guys are my passion. They love to come to the restaurant and they love to have their grandpa wait on them. And so my role with them is to teach them, be kind, be polite. They get to see their grandpa work hard so they can go to the movies and do things. But above all, I show them that what I do is a legitimate career choice. And I work in an industry of incredible opportunity. You've all taken the time in this horrible weather to come here to the show today. Um, take it in. Me personally, professionally, I can't thank you enough for coming to listen to me today. Again, if you didn't get that email address, let me know. Send me your email, mention the movies, I'll send you both. Um, any questions at all for me? Huh? Everybody good? You guys, thank you very, very much. Now, before you leave, I need one favor, because I'm this kind of a freak. We're going to do a selfie. You'll see yourselves on Waiters World's Facebook page. All right, are you ready? I'm gonna do it twice. Let's see, that's good. Remember, game face, game face. All right, you guys, it's counting. Ready, one, two, three, here we go. And one more. 
Who made that hand gesture? Oh, I want to make sure it was the right one. All right, here we go. One more, here we go. One, two, three, cheese, and yes. All right, you guys, enjoy this little. Thank you very, very much.